Education points. What type of exercise is best for CRPS? Is ketamine coma more effective than high dose ketamine? Okay, Leslie, it's now July 25, and it's important to note that now it's two days. In other words, the last infusion was on Friday, it's now Monday. So you've had some chance to uh, experience. Uh, can I say your new body? Yes. <laughs> okay. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to talk about how things went during the infusion. What did we learn about you in particular, okay? One of the things we learned about you is you're a very, very expensive date, right? Yes. What does that mean? That means we get you up to 200 milligrams of ketamine, and we document that on a video. 200 milligrams of ketamine, which would make most people unable to think straight at all. Your brain was pretty much intact and you were able to answer questions, retain information, so forth and so on. Which suggests to me that you could probably even go high, we could have even gone higher in your particular situation. However, I will note that you had a few episodes in the beginning, but not at the end, where you felt a little dysphoric, meaning you felt a little um, shaken a bit uh, mentally by the, by, the, uh, by the ketamine. But that disappeared over time, right? Yes. And uh, we also know that if you ever had to have one of these again, that chances are it'll be it'll be um, a lot easier on you from a from a, in terms of a comfort creature comfort standpoint. Your vital signs were extremely stable, uh, which is which is good. And we talked about um, uh, about the fact that uh, we wanted to make sure that we did everything to encourage you to, even though you just recently started to smoke again, that you're gonna you're gonna try not to continue with that, right? Yes. Okay. Because you need to have a good set of lungs. Stopping to, Wednesday. Good girl. Good. Good for you. Good for you. Um, now the um, so um, also um, we gave you 28 milligrams pre-treatment of the Zofran, which seems to help you in terms of you didn't have any problems with nausea, vomiting, or anything like that, even at the higher doses of ketamine. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So we just did your pain thresholds. Now one of the things we noticed about you in particular is your pain thresholds already were really pretty high, especially in that right lower extremity. In fact, your foot was pretty much numb or dead for sensation before we started, okay? So we knew that going into this, that uh, in terms of getting an objective assessment on you, we're going to have to depend more in function than on your pain thresholds, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's go and look, take a look at function right now, okay? You ready for that? Yes. Okay, first thing I want you to do is, um, is take your right hand, uh, or you should say your right upper extremity, and see if you, remember you couldn't put it behind your head effectively before without severe pain. See if you can put that right hand behind your head. Add a girl. You having any pain when you do that? No. All right, very good. Now while I've got, while we're on, got our attention over, remember the other thing you couldn't do? Get your arm up. Remember you can go up like that. You could go up like that, but you couldn't bring it down. Go ahead and bring it down. You having any pain when you do that? No, I'm stretching. Just stretching. And we talked about that, didn't we? Yes. And we talked about the fact that when you came in, your shoulder was bent forward, you remember? Yes. And it's not bent forward anymore. No, no, no. Am I no. correct on that? Correct. And what you're feeling there is just being, uh, it's what we call a lack of use uh, syndrome. In other words, you're just out of shape on that shoulder. And so with time, with the, with the pool exercise we're going to discuss a little bit later, um, that, that I should expect that, uh, that little soreness you have, which really isn't pain, kind of a stiffness, mm -hmm. that that will go away. Okay? Yes. Now, all right. Now, well, just for completeness now, let's take that left arm behind your head. You didn't have any problems before. No. And you don't have any problems now, right? No. Nope. And so Dr. Kirkpatrick didn't create any new problems, did he? <laughs> right? No. All right. Now take that right hand out in front of you. Remember how sluggish you were in opening? Oh, do it as fast as you can. See how much faster you are now? Yes. Okay. Now do the other side, please. Okay. Very good. And uh, oh, by the way, do that other one again because you didn't even move your thumb. Uh, open and close. That a girl. Good job. Good job. Okay. The next thing we're going to do here is, again, for completeness, keep looking straight ahead and, and uh, do the vertical finger test with your left hand. Put two vertical fingers in your mouth. Take them out. Good. You have any pain to do that? Nope. You didn't have any pain when we started, but we will mention that you did have ongoing pain. Point to where you had the ongoing pain up into your it jaw. Straight in a straight line up into right. Into right, right, and it was jaw. always kind of there, right? Yes. Do you have it now? No. It didn't. That hasn't come back. Okay. Now, next thing we want to do is we want to turn our attention to your lower extremities, and I want you to take that right. Uh, bring your past legs up a little bit, please. Okay. That a girl. Both sides, please. And rotate that right uh, ankle for me, please. Now, you, oh, look how much faster that is. I know. I, I yeah. haven't done this yet. Yeah, yeah. Wiggle your toes now. Right. And uh, hitchhike back to, God, I forgot where you came from. Jersey. New Jersey, right. I want to right. go back there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Now do your, uh, do your left. Atta girl. Wiggle your toes, please. Hitchhike on back. 
There you go. Good, good, good job. Good job. Okay, now we're going to do the more challenging things. And um, I'm going to ask Tabby to come in here just in case, just to be on the safe side. Uh, Tabby? And we're going to get you up. Uh, I want you to get up in, in front of the doorway there. All right. And uh, that's it. Now just walk normally three steps forward, please. Okay. And three steps back. Okay. Hey, Tabby, just be on the safe side. Just, oh, Sanella, that's fine. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Okay, now, uh, uh, just, she's there if you need her. I don't want you okay. to fall and hurt yourself. Okay, walk on your toes. Three steps forward, please. Atta girl. You were limping when you did that last time. Do you remember? Go yes. ahead. Go on back. I remember. Right, right, right. And when you stopped, you had pain mostly in your knee on that right side and going up into your whole leg, correct? Yes. Okay, you have, you have that anymore? No. Okay, very good. Next thing, which was more painful and more challenging, was to take three steps on your heels uh, forward and back. Go ahead. All right, so now let's there if you need her help. Okay, go on back. Okay, very good. Now, um, how did how, did you have any pain when you did that? No. So the pain's gone. Okay, very good. All right, now the one more thing I want you to come up close. Come over here about right in there. That a girl. Stop there. Okay, stand still. Now, go ahead and show us how you can, on the left side, show us how you can get those toes off the ground. You know, you couldn't do that before over there on your right side. See if you can do it now. Look at, you couldn't do that before. No, now you I couldn't can, even lift it ahead. You could inch. not. That's right. <laughs> you couldn't do it at all. And furthermore, you could, you, that foot, the foot felt dead. In other words, you had no sensation down there at all. Right. And now you have some sensation? No, I can feel it, yeah. You can feel it now, right. Mm -hmm. And that's important for balance, isn't it? Yes. Okay, very good. You can sit down, please. Okay. Now... We want to go over some. Uh, we want to go over some things here with you, okay? Okay. And um, one of the things uh, I want to I want to go over with you is um, how can you get better without more ketamine infusions? And we talked about the heated pull exercises, didn't we? Yes. One of the questions you asked me is what should the temperature of the water be? What we said is that if you get in the water and it's a heated pool and it's cold when you first get in there, um, that's okay. But if it's still cold after three minutes then you have to get out, okay. okay? And that's because it takes about three minutes for your body to equilibrate so that you get good circulation into your skin, okay? Okay. Uh, the other thing uh, we talked about is uh, four very important reasons why the heat of pull exercise is the name of the game for you. Reason one, you need the buoyancy because you're not ready to do uh, weight-bearing exercises with that right lower extremity of yours. And the, that's one way to get the weight off because remember, the most common reason for relapse is re-injury. And knowing you, you, you came from a very athletic background, and chances are you're going to go back and do some things that uh, you may go back and do some things unintentionally that might re-injure yourself. So we want to keep you, keep you uh, fairly well protected in that, in that regard. The second reason is that water is a good desensitizer to pain, okay? okay. The third thing is that um, it's an exercise where you're least likely to re-injure yourself, okay? Okay. And the fourth reason is it can be a profound stress reliever. So we talked about in your situation in particular, you got a lot of things on your plate, okay? And um, you have to find ways to find uh, stress management is an important part of rehab. So if you're going to go to, um, let's say, if you're going to do the heat of pull exercises, make sure the kids aren't in the water squirting water at you and sh with water guns and all that kind of stuff. You have to find some solitude, okay, when you're, when you're exercising, okay? Um, we also talked about this technique called Watsu, that's W-A-T-S-U, and we gave you some information on that. It's a type of exercise you can do in the water to get further uh, stress relief, okay? Okay. Now, um, okay, does that mean, um, I think you had some questions about what other exercise you can do, right? Yes. Go ahead. Um, about essentially how active I should be. Prior to this, to getting my treatment done, I was actually in a wheelchair. I could not walk around Target, I couldn't walk around the grocery store because it was too much on my leg. How far should I be walking now? Like how much is too much? Okay. So I don't overdo it. Right. Uh, that's going to lead us on to another thing, and that's called exercise tolerance, isn't it? Yes. So we're going to talk about that now. So let's let's go back to the heated pool, and okay. which will answer that question. Okay. Now, if you get in the water, okay, and let's say you decide it's a 15-minute workout, you're going to go back and forth, tread back and forth across the water for 15 minutes. That's all you can do, and you get out of the water, okay. Mm -hmm. And let's just say you get out of the water and you have no pain. Is that good or bad? That is bad. Why is it bad? <laughs> because I should have muscle soreness. Yeah, right. You, in other words, you, you used to work out and you know that in order to make progress and develop strength, 
ligaments and muscle and so forth, you need to have uh, a little bit of soreness after you work out. We call that a good hangover, okay? Right. If you do, if you go and you do that uh, uh, 15 minutes and you end up in bed for one, two, or three days, that's called what? A bad hangover. That's a bad hangover, and you got to avoid those. If you go, like you were suggesting, you go, had to go shopping for whatever, get, get gifts for the kids or whatever, and you get back and you're laid up in bed for one, two, or three days, that's a bad hangover, isn't it? Yes. Okay. So, so that's what you need to be looking for. Now, you can use the exercise tolerance as a way to gauge whether or not you need another ketamine infusion. Okay. So, for example, if you're doing 15 minutes week one and 20 minutes the next week, that's an increase in your exercise tolerance, isn't it? Yes. And so, therefore, you don't have to be anxious about um, uh, having another ketamine infusion. However, if you're not making that progress, then you probably ought to be thinking about it, you know, pretty seriously. Okay? okay? All right. Now, um, the uh, other thing we talked about um, is other exercises you can do, right? Yes. Um, now, the idea is to avoid things that uh, could re-injure. I'm going to recommend, at least for the next year, you don't even think about weightlifting or anything of that nature because you can re-injure yourself that way. However, if you decide to do something like cycling or canoeing or something like that, that's okay because those are low-impact things that you can control the environment where you're least likely to re-injure yourself, okay? Okay. Are there any other exercises that you might want to do that uh, we haven't talked about? Not that I can think of. Okay. Um, how about Tai Chi or yoga? Uh, those are fine. Those are more uh, re relaxation right. techniques. And so, yes, those are fine. Okay. Absolutely fine. Now, as far as hypnosis is concerned, um, uh, that takes a lot of skill. Some people respond. Some people don't respond. I know we talked about that a little okay. bit. Um, but just some uh, relaxation techniques. Sometimes a good clinical psychologist can help you with some, some other techniques that can be used for stress management. Okay? Okay. Is that that biofeedback stuff? What's biofeedback? Well, biofeedback, again, takes a little bit of time. It's not as important as the exercise types of okay. activities, okay? okay? Now, we did talk about um, the fact that, um, like I say, stress is one of your worst uh, enemies, right? There's one other thing that's like your worst enemy, and that is we talked about uh, a four-letter word that people around you cannot use, okay? Remember the four-letter yes. word? What's that word? Uh, pain. That's right, pain. What's, what's the, they should be using the F word, right? Function. That's right. <laughs> That's right. The function. They should be using the, the, the function word, right? Yes. Because that's where you need to focus your attention to get the best outcome because pain is so confusing, you know, to people who have CRPS and they can't make much sense out of it. But function, you certainly can, you know, as we described, as we discussed earlier in terms of exercise uh, tolerance, okay? Okay. Now, the other thing we talked about is the medications you're on, okay? Right. And uh, let me ask you a question here, okay? I just want to make a test question. You ready for that? Yes. Okay. Is there a role for narcotics in treating RSD? In treating RSD? No. Yes, there is. Okay, so let's go over it. Let's go over it. I thought it was only if you hurt yourself, and that's well, not for treat, but that's not treating RSD. Well, that's you, treating an acute injury to I, prevent the RSD. I'll admit it's a tricky question. That's <laughs> why I put it to you that way. So let's go over it, okay? Okay. All right, you're right. It's use, it's effective for acute pain, not, not the neuropathic or the RSD pain, okay? Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, the reason that it's effective for the acute pain, that you know. What's the reason why it affects acute pain? Because it's a different type of brain. It's a different type of pain in your brain. Right. It's, it's a different chemi signal. Different chemicals are involved. And, they mm -hmm. are, and the narcotics, if necessary, are effective for treating that. Now, here's how the treatment comes in for the CRP. If you don't treat that acute pain, what's going to happen? You're going to have a flare-up. That's right. So in that sense, indirectly, the narcotics can be helpful. Do you follow me? They can yes. be effective. Because if you, so the point is, I want you to think that you know, if you're in the dental chair and, they, and he's grinding away on your teeth and you're having pain, <laughs> somebody has to do something right. about it because it's going to set off your CRPS, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Very good. Uh, how while you're on that topic, how about surgeries? If can somebody have surgery if they need it if they have right. CRPS or no? Yeah. J yes, they can. But there is it puts you at increased risk, and there are some things that can be done to minimize the risk. That's why. When patients are about to undergo surgery, I suggest they have their surgeon call me so we can talk about some of these ways to minimize okay. your risk. But if you don't absolutely have to have it, you should avoid it. Right. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. 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 Because it's injury, isn't it? Yes. Which can set off your CRPS. Right. Which, yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Now, can you think of anything else that we might uh, that, that, that any other? Oh, um, there's one other thing. 
Uh, your, uh, your, your friend, uh, Lisa, asked a question, which I thought was a very, very important question. And that question is, what about the ketamine coma? Right. Why not uh, do that? Okay. Well, <clears throat> you have to understand there's a big difference between what we do here with the high-dose ketamine, right. or in your case, it was over a four-day period. There's a huge difference between that and the coma. And, the one, and two things to keep in mind in terms of our, our the number one is risk. It's not the ketamine that can hurt, harm you when you go into the intensive care unit. It's also other things that can happen. We've, in the germ, when we started the study in Germany, we had one patient that still has some neuro, neurological deficits because she got a superbug infection. In Monterey, Mexico, we had one patient that perforated her bowel and she almost died. Uh, she's doing fine. She benefited from the ketamine. But those are risk factors that come into play when you're in an intensive care unit in a, on a ventilator, very high risk. Right. Whereas a three or four day ketamine outpatient infusion doesn't even come close. We've done over a thousand of these infusions and we haven't had any serious complications. Maybe, maybe one or two patients have had a, a bad dream or something like that, okay? Okay. Now, um, the other thing to remember is with the ketamine coma, it's a part of a study. Well, that means that you're probably not going to get reimbursed by your insurance company, okay? Mm -hmm. Whereas with the three-day ketamine treatment, it's been proven effective in two well-controlled clinical trials. And uh, were they actually used as a control uh, Versed or midazolam, which makes the patient feel like they're getting ketamine, but they're not. And those patients that got the midazolam did not respond uh, to uh, their CRPS, did not respond, whereas those that got the ketamine did respond, okay? Okay. And furthermore, um, the, uh, we use, when you're doing it on an outpatient basis, you're using ketamine according to the way it was approved by the Food and Drug Administration for, uh, for breakthrough pain, both in terms of route of administration and dosing, okay? okay? So for all those reasons, many of the patients that undergo the uh, outpatient ketamine treatment can go back to their insurance company and get reimbursed for that, okay? okay. Under those circumstances. So, those, so the cost in doing uh, a ketamine coma is much, much higher. The, uh, the deposit to get into the hospital for ketamine coma is like $50,000, okay? Okay. Now, the study in Monterey, um, we've done uh, over 30 patients. Uh, we, met, we met the quota. The Institutional Review Board, which supervises the study, is no longer approving patients there. So that study now has been closed, okay? Okay. Um, so, um, and my experience tells me that fortunately, with the high-dose ketamine on an outpatient basis, um, we're... Uh, I, we can't tell you that it's better than the ketamine coma for in terms of outcome, in terms of efficacy. But uh, the results have been so, uh, so remarkable as evidence, for example, in your case, as one example, that we, we're, we're, and because the risk is so low and the expense is, is uh, more reasonable, that uh, we we're pushing more in that direction as we speak. Okay? Okay. Do you have any questions about that? Did I clarify that question? You clarified that question. I do have one other question as far as treatments and that kind of stuff. Should I be getting, like, nerve blocks? in the mean like does a nerve block do something different than the ketamine does yeah it does different things but i don't think it's going to be effective in your case because remember you got symptoms in their face you got symptoms in your uh right upper extremity right. and your right lower extremity but so if my pain level becomes a 10 and i stop being able to lift my toes up and all that stuff so i should not be no, getting no, a nerve block no remember you what went through I some <laughs> you went through some 15 you went through some 15 or 20 right Stella and I block. got relief though. Yeah, it was short term. Short term, but, term, but not, and not long lasting. Right, right. So, um, so that's probably not going to be effective. And the point is that you can sometimes, by you know, just sticking needles enough needles in people, you can uh, set off RSD. Now, with sympathetic blocks, it's not likely, but it is it is possible with the other types of blocks that are often done. What's a stellate ganglion? That's a sympathetic nerve oh, block okay. for, so for the upper. So then, what do you do? Well, in that situation, this is where you have to use your best judgment in terms of what's causing the pain. If it's acute injury, then you may have to go on to the strong pain medicine right. for one or two but or three. But if it's the nerve pain. If it's just the nerve pain, then you probably need another ketamine infusion, especially if your function's deteriorating. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. That, that's the answer. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Um, now, if that were the case, would I need the one day or would I need three or four days? Because I know I've seen on your website sometimes people just come back and get like a one day yeah, in your infusion. case, in your case, you have your choice. I think you would do better for a four day. Okay. I think right. I think because you can, we can probably do more benefit for you just okay. looking at uh, at the way things went. Okay. But three days is is uh, believe me is also effective. Okay. Okay. 
All right. Any other questions? About that in particular? Or anything. About anything. Oh, um, as far as the wheelchair you know, look, and the you walking. Had some, you had yeah, the wheelchair Go look at your notes. You brought some You never answered that question. What's that? The exercise tolerance question. Okay, you go know, ahead. Like, with the wheelchair, you know, should I be pushing myself? Oh, no, because if it's causing pain, then I shouldn't be doing it or I should be doing it. Yeah, you, you're going to, look, when you exercise, you're going to have pain. If you don't, you're right, not. But, like, if I'm going, let's say I'm going to the mall, which I'm not planning to, but let's say I'm going to the mall. Should I be in a wheelchair or should I be pushing myself walking throughout that mall? If you're, if you're going to end up with a bad hangover, you should be in a wheelchair. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, look at your notes. I know you came in with some notes here. Yeah. Um. And by the way, so, just so you know, Lisa, Lisa had to go, go. Yeah, Lisa had to go back to work. Go back to work. So, gotcha. that is why she's not here. Okay. Um. Uh, before I got here, I was doing almost like a detox program. I was going in an infrared sauna, and I was being very careful with my diet and all that kind of stuff. Is that is it okay for me to do all that? You can do it, but I don't think it's going to be helpful. Okay, but it's not going to hurt me. No. Anyway, okay. No. Um, I think you answered all of them. Good. Yep, that's all, right. all of them. All right.